was a kid, we just called it camping. But if you ask the experts today, you'll get another definition. And that's okay. Things change over time. The air clears, and we can see things in a different light. Overlanding is self-reliant overland travel to remote destinations where the journey is the principal goal. According to Wikipedia, at least. Others specify it as vehicle-reliant adventure travel. But it's obvious for those of us who do this with young children that for them, it's dad-reliant adventure travel. This time, I set off with two other grown, independent adults who require no direct care from me. And for the first time, in longer than I can remember, I set out on a trip of free exploration and adventure where bad ideas abound, the F-bombs flow like beer, and the beer flows like wine. I, for one, embrace the new nomenclature, but don't call this overlanding. This is Broverlanding. Now, it can be hard to tell the difference at times, but some of the hallmarks of Brover landing are getting 4K footage of yourself airing down your rig, driving entirely too close to each other because it looks better in the drone footage, posting everyone's Instagram handle, going on and on and on about your modified suspension. Hi, this is Mike. I'm an adventure to dad. Today we're near Wellington, Nevada. We've got two Tacomas, each with brand new suspension, and we're going to test them out here in the Pine Grove Hills and the Sweetwater Range in Nevada. My Tacoma, as you may have seen if you watched the last video, has uh, ARB Old Man Emu BP-51 shocks and springs um, with a two inch lift and I also have new tires, Nitto Ridge Grappler tires. Those are about 32 inch nominal size and the actual size of the tire is 255 80 17 and those are on Method 703 Trail Series wheels. Mike Higdon, who you may remember from other videos, Mike's Tacoma here has new shocks with the Bilstein 5100s. Uh, he's got the stock springs in the front and in the rear he's got stock springs with the uh, add a leaf system from Icon. He's also running Nitto Ridge Grapplers in the stock size of 265 70 16 um, and we both aired down before we got on the road we aired down to 20 psi to smooth things out sort of even things out. So it's not really a comparison of the tires it's not really a comparison of the suspension either just what we want to try to illustrate here is um, what an improvement you can get in ride comfort, ride quality, and control and safety if you make uh, a small upgrade in the shocks, or in the case of my suspension, a pretty significant upgrade in the shocks. So we're going to hit the trail here after we explore this little ghost town and see some pretty cool sights here in central Nevada. Thanks for joining us. Let's hit the trail. This little obstacle here, even though it's not that difficult, is pretty typical of stuff that you see on regular overlanding trips and stuff that's kind of borderline what a stock vehicle can do. So we're going to see how Mike does on this one.
And that's where we left it for day one of our Broverlanding adventure. Other stuff happened, yeah, but, you know, it was bro stuff. Day two began with coffee and breakfast sandwiches. Then some vista viewing of the low settled smoke over the Pine Grove Hills. Then we headed out across Boulder Flat toward the other side of the Sweetwaters. This road is rough with steep, tight switchbacks, but it's totally passable in a stock 4x4 like Mike's Tacoma. Adventurous souls could and likely have also probably done it in a Subaru. The road tops out here at this spectacular promontory atop the Sweetwaters with views of the Sierra Nevada and Great Basin all around. Actual results may vary due to smoke. Here's where the bad ideas come in. Through this whole descent from the mountain summit, I was shooting video and making Colin drive over all kinds of rocks to get footage I could use for Nitto, Method, and ARB content. And if you've been watching Harry's situations on the Driving Line YouTube channel, you've seen some of this footage there. So then I'm like, let's test the suspension. And then I thought, eh, I could hit that faster. Anyway, Nate's precision fixed all that this week. If you want to go really crazy, even with bypass shocks, you need air bumps and reinforced control arms. Eh, live and learn. Okay, now for a detailed and well thought out suspension comparison. All right, so now I am in Mike's Tacoma and it is the same year as mine, the same trim level TRD off-road as mine. Um, different color and it has different options but um, everything else is pretty much the same so we're gonna compare the suspension um, that I've been driving with all weekend with this which is the Bilstein 5100 series shocks on regular springs and um, I've been driving that on my 4Runner for several years now and I think it's pretty pretty good I have gotten pretty spoiled with the ARB uh, the old man emu BP 51 uh, two-inch lift all right start it up start hitting some bumps here. I'm going to turn the air on. It's hot. Oh, it definitely feels different in the back. I could feel like the back kind of smacking around a little bit different. Well, the front's really soft and comfortable. Woo! Oh, okay, that didn't do it. That was good. Yeah, that's going to handle that. <laughs> Okay, so that's awesome. We almost just went through this dip and it just settled the uh, tires straight into them. If you can find the uh, washboard, that's where it shines. Yeah, 
So that was pretty cool. There's some little whoops here, and it's handling the whoops just fine. I'm not going crazy fast, but the whoops are great. And the ride is great. Lots of good bumps here. There's a big whoop. Ooh, yeah, we just bottomed out both front and back and felt great. Close your windows. <laughs> We had a skid plate there. That was pretty rad. Hopefully he doesn't do that in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say definitely, you know, comparing this to stock suspension, I can already tell that it's way better. It's got good control, responsiveness. We take a turn hard, stays with it. We're gonna go through a water wash here. Boom. Yeah, we're hitting bumps hitting rocks soaking everything up yeah it feels pretty different I mean obviously the weight is different on this truck because of the back and stuff uh, let's see okay I wanted to do these wallops okay so it still kind of does the same thing mine does with the like popping over uh, the humps here uh, but it still catches up I think better and softer than mine and I would definitely handles the whoops a lot better than um, the stock Tacoma suspension will handle the stock Tacoma uh, shocks will bottom out and they'll have a really harsh bottom out and then they'll rebound really fast um, and that doesn't feel great and it throws your gear around everywhere and it jostles your children if you have them um, yeah so especially at like higher speeds it can handle a lot uh, so my body roll is significantly dampened from the OEM, but this is even more dampened. Like, the car doesn't roll at all, really. Um, it stays super straight. Has that been your experience the whole time? Yeah. That's nice. What do you think? That was pretty wild. I did pretty fast, too, so... Did it as fast as I felt safe doing it? Yeah, same. Yeah, yours definitely like fills in those gaps really fast. Right. Like it reacts immediately. Yeah. Like there was a hump over there that was like, oh shit, it just the tires were like, nope, we got it. Yep, yep, yep. And with that, we took off for home. We'd found a clean pocket of air in a long, hot, smoky summer in Reno. And in that clarity, we learned that being out in the mountains with your bros is great, no matter what you call it. Fancy suspension is great, but so is nice suspension. And if we're being realistic, Stock suspension is fine too. Just make sure you air down your tires, have plenty of beer, and for crap's sake, keep a tight pattern so the drone footage looks badass. Happy trails.